This past May, Memorial Day evening, I watched in horror as George Floyd suffered under the knee of Minneapolis police officer Chauvin. Etched in the hearing was Mr. Floyd pleading for his mother and his continuous cries of, I can't breathe. Black, indigenous people of color are too familiar with the pressure of one's knee on their neck. I also struggled to catch my breath that evening. I couldn't breathe. My breathing is always impacted when I witness such violence. George Floyd journeyed to the Twin Cities for a better life. I also came to the Twin Cities for a better life. I completed my Augsburg degree. As an Augsburg alum, I know the importance of being an informed citizen. Earlier that same evening, I had been on a family chat with family who were suffering with breathing because of difficulties due to their contacting COVID-19 virus. It was emotionally difficult watching my loved ones struggling to breathe. As we pondered in our hearts the theme for this year's virtual Augsburg Advent Vespers, the image and sound of one's breath was at the center. A man crying out for his mama, countless people struggling to breathe burdened by the COVID-19, the cacophony of people around the world crying out for justice amid the pandemics of disease and systemic racism. Into this breathless moment, a young pregnant woman breathes in anticipation of a child's advent. There is something so divine to witness and experience the birth breathing. In the holy imagination of this season, we know Mary, the mother of Jesus, to be pregnant with the very breath of promise. The promise of God taking on flesh and breathing among us. During this 2020 Advent Vestors video, Encounter, you are invited with the whole Augsburg community to experience our communal waiting for the coming of the breath of God. Come now, O breath of God, stir up your power your pulsating life and come among us. From the tumult of this exasperated world, rife with the pandemics of coronavirus and racism, of climate change and unjust economic systems, heed our cry for the need of your advent here. O come, Emmanuel, into this suffocating world. Come, come, send your mystic breath anew. Give health to every heaving breast and strength to all on liberation's quest. Amen.
Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my spirit delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. Thus says God, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the peoples upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. Isaiah 42, 1, 5 through 6. As we journey together through the Advent season, we are called to keep watch, to stay awake, to be vigilant, to be patient as we wait for our God breaking into human history, to love breaking into the world in the person of the baby Jesus, the Christ child, to God's breath breathing life again and again so that all of creation might be renewed, revived, and restored. And yet in these extraordinary times, these pandemic times in which our lives have been turned upside down by a virus, by economic upheaval, by racial reckoning, it's hard to be patient as we long for health and equity and justice for all God's creation. The wonder of our annual Advent Vespers is the moment it offers for thousands of good folks to come together in this beautiful sanctuary to receive the gift of this season, the gift of calm and patience and faith that God is at work in the world, at work in the ways of peace and love and justice. This year, that gift is perhaps more needed than ever as we live in the midst of pandemics that literally take our breath away. In this 41st Advent Vespers, virtual as they are, we pray for the breath that animates all of creation, and we receive once again the breath of life that is the gift of our awesome God. Come now, now come, O breath of God. And thus revived, we turn as God's faithful people to the urgently needed work of peace and justice, of reconciliation and healing that we are called to do in the world. As I challenge our new students each fall, we are called first to show up, to be present for and with each other. We then are called to pay attention, to attend to the ways that God is working in the world and what our response will be. And finally, we are called to do the work, the work of those who have been redeemed, those who have the gift of breath. May these Advent Vespers be for all of us a Sabbath moment that renews and revives and restores us once again for the times in which we live. Come now, come now, O breath of God.
and with your spirit. We are the breath of God. There is no other, no holier spirit, no inspiration without our bodies, without inhalation, without exhalation. In the end, whether late or soon, we will not expire alone, but slip into this breathing world. Breathe in if they let you, and the world and you are one. You are we. Breathe out. They cannot stop you. And your spirit reforms the world. beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh, that is, the Word took breath and lived among us. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone all around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people to you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah the Lord. The Word took breath and lived among us. This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. The Word took breath and lived among us. When the angels had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. In the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh, breath and bone and blood, and lived among us. For musicians who sing, our very bodies are our instruments. It's the breath that makes the voice vibrate, and it's the breath that carries our music out onto the air. But now, um, 
as we go into the winter solstice this year, when we need healing more than ever, um, it's been determined that breathing together and singing together is one of the most dangerous things we can do. So the song you're gonna hear from Appalachia, Beautiful Star, um, we did begin learning it in a real time Zoom instruction visit with a beautiful artist from Appalachia, Emily Miller. As much as we miss what we do together, um, we were excited to hear what came back. It's, it's still possible to create beauty with our voices and we'll do it in any way that we can. So this is our offering, Beautiful Star. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving a light for those who long have gone, have gone, and guiding the wise men on their way unto the place where Jesus lay. Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on. Unto the land of perfect day, O oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shine on, shine on. O oh, beautiful star, the hope of light, guiding the pilgrims through the night, over the mountains till the break of dawn, of dawn. into the light. Lord, how we long to get to the presence of where you are. 
Your word is a fine art gallery in Venice, Paris, Lord. We mourn this senseless oppression. God, we know that you are good and your mercy endures forever, but our world is in the present reflection of your love. We've been deceived into believing the frequent occurrence of a black man like George Floyd being murdered is a sense of normalcy. And just because it's been done forever doesn't equate normalcy. What more sorrow do we have to collectively endure to be competent of the stresses the world endures? See, we never fully heal, see, the veil was torn, so we'd lean on weeping with those who mourn. Are we burden bearers or ashes full of urn? Fill our homes with hope as you search our hearts. Help us forgive offenses and deepen our faith. See, our hope comes from you, Lord, and not ourselves. See, just like your gospel, we are pawns in your game of chess. We expect love and joy, but you are infinite and everlasting life, Christ. Long before you were here, the prophets told us of your anticipation. When you arrived, you told us the goodness of your kingdom. You said that you did great things, but we would do far greater. See, every day we seek you, we seek new life. You are the joy of our hearts and the light of our lives. Howard Thurman wrote, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the prince are home, when the shepherds are back with the flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among all, to make music in the heart. And in this Advent season, we add to Thurman's words, to give breath to all the breathless world. Holy One, 
Now let us, thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, the mystic breath of God, the word made flesh, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Glory be to God the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, the mother of us all, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <laughs>